front piece I didn't put a whole lot in. Basically just the sides where it's going to be against my sides. Right here. The, uh, the abs piece is going to come up to about... It clips into these here. So I've got to put the ab piece in and see where I need to cut this down to. What I need to shave this off. But this is going to be against my rib cage basically so I want to padding there and I got some thin padding to go up here around the collar even though this doesn't really touch my chest I just put a real thin piece on just in case uh, that back piece pushes it more forward since the back piece has uh, the back piece has like got a ton I mean that whole sheet of padding it feels really good I put it on already feels really good so it's gonna work here are the uh, index fingers or the, not index fingers but your four fingers up here I'm printing the thumb at the moment um, I got some over here fixing to be primered and I've got these ones that have been primered and they're all over the place you may be thinking how do you know which is which because your index and ring fingers are about the same size so how do you know which is which uh, what I've been doing is marking each of these. This is the, a middle finger piece. It's a middle finger piece. Uh, there's an eye for the index. That one is the ring finger. Another ring finger. And it's a pinky finger. So every single one of them is marked on the inside. Not Sorry, my light went out. When I get to the point where I'm combining them with the actual glove, I'll go through here and put LR or RR, you know, or LM, RM, RP, LP, you know, for left finger or left index, left pinky, right pinky, you know, things like that. So, because some of these are shaped different, I'll show you some of these bases down here. This is the same. I think, right, pinky and pinky. And I'm fixing to primer these, and then I'm gonna be sanding these. This is the last palm, this is the last palm piece that I have. I ended up drilling these. If you're following me on Instagram, you've seen whenever I drilled these out. And then I'll show you the rest of the hand parts. Here's the rest of the hand parts. So that's the hand toppers, the other palm, it's drilled out in there and then both the top parts of the glove this one doesn't have anything on the inside but this one does so the way that these are going to go on is got to make this one tighter uh, actually I should probably make both of them tighter uh, but then the bottom piece has the same thing so this will let me just show you that I'll just go like that I'm gonna keep that loose because I think I'm gonna need to in order to make good fists and stuff. It's not too tight. Plus, it's gonna have to have enough room on the inside for the lights to go there. Um, that's how it'll go. Let's see with the fingers on it. So there it is with the fingers, the top four fingers on it. Of course, that'll have a glove to help keep the tips on. I'm not trying to bend it too much because the tips are just kind of about to fall off. You can see that middle one <laughs> hanging sideways. So you need that extra room for the glove though. So it looks like my fingers are super long, but they're not. Alright, so what I'm doing here is uh, I'm trying out this fabric glue along with this elastic stuff to see how strong it is. Um, so let's go along with there. Middle index. Actually, it's the middle. That's the thumb. So all I'm doing with these, I've got one hand here, one hand here. What I was planning on doing is I've got, I got these gloves and I was planning on putting them over the glove, but the glove is so thick that 
it squeezes my hand like crazy. Because remember, I made these almost perfect in size. So basically, I'm doing one at a time. I did all the tips here, and then I'll do these all one at a time too. So this is going to be a very lengthy process, uh, except for the thumb, of course. Because the thumb will just go in right away. So they match up basically like that. And what you can do on these next pieces is get some tape and make it just a tad bit faster. Now I got this idea from someone else who did the fingers with an elastic thing and in the bottom of it you hook it to your thing so when you put your top and bottom on you just pull the fingers over. So this should be able to stretch enough to where you go over the fingers and down. We are making the shoe to the Iron Man costume, Iron Man suit. And you can see it's got, it's still drying a little bit, this back piece is. You can see just how many pieces this is. One, two, three, four, five. Actually, this is two pieces. It's, the seam is right there. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and thirteen. Fourteen. About fourteen pieces all together. Um, basically, we're just going to put it together like a puzzle. We've got an entire box of all the pieces. Uh, what we're going to use for an adhesive primarily is we're going to use flex glue. We're going to use vinyl fabric and plastic and we're going to do some good old-fashioned tpu uh, solder welding so i want to get these you got to understand these are the shoes so these are going to take the most force they're gonna you're going to be walking in them so your feet are constantly you know you have to have some flex in it your feet are constantly moving side to side up and down got a bend here I mean there's so much different stuff in it you got to make sure that these are good so even when this this shoe's done you can see that I've already started the process I'm gonna be coating the entire inside of this with that flex glue uh, probably a few layers of it just to get a good bond a good hold and uh, keep it all together I don't know a whole lot about uh, shoes but I know shoes are held together with glue. I'm pretty sure it's rubber cement, but I could be wrong. And from what I've heard is flex glue is better than rubber cement. So we'll see. I should have probably used rubber cement and I may go back over a few spots with rubber cement, um, but we're gonna get to this point. Another reason why I did it this way with the TPU in primary areas and then PLA, because this is PLA, this is PLA. Uh, the red and black is the TPU and the clear pink yeah, the clear pink, pink and blue uh, are all PLA. It's because I do want some spots that I can get down and really smooth out, especially this top top piece. So it'll draw your eyes from the TPU because I'm not going to use Alex Flex on this at all. So I want to be able to draw your eyes away from these parts by having a really smooth um, PLA area. If, you, if that makes any sense. But these, these areas are way too small to be putting Alex Flex in. 
Um, I want to use this, the least amount of stuff as possible because when the more you put Alex Flex on, the heavier it gets. And I don't want heavy shoes at all. These are already going to have electronics inside of it. They're going to have LEDs. It's also going to have a thick thing of foam. This is real thin foam just for padding. And then it's also going to have some real thick packing foam um, right over where the box is going to be. I'm going to leave that there because that's the idea. We have all these pieces. I like to keep extra scrap TPUs so whenever I'm doing the melting. I need to cover a bigger area um, than I can. I put the one shoe together so I could see how it goes, so I could do this entire shoe for you guys. Uh, this is all the pieces, all of them, and they make that, so, I'm probably going to launch this into fast forward, because it, I mean, this, this thing took me an entire day to do, because you have to wait, certain parts are glued, certain parts are melted, so, and the melting process itself takes a long time, and so the first thing I'm going to do is this. And this is a really, really cruddy uh, put together piece, but you can see how much is actually visible. So it doesn't really matter. It's not a huge deal for me. All right, so what I did with the other one is I've got this. You've got to get this to 3M. Um, regular scotch tape does not stick to a TPU. In fact, this, this stuff has a hard time sticking with the TPU, but it does, so it sticks way better to PLA, but it still takes, sticks a little bit to TPU. So, um, like that. And the other piece did look just about this bad, so... Once you start filling in the gaps with TPU, it starts looking a whole lot better. Let's see that. I'll do that first. this far but I'm gonna try to keep it in the light so basically this piece has a little crease in it it's very very helpful because it's just the width uh,
this other one. Alright, ignore the, the uh, episodes of House in the background. I'm not going to be um, with the noise on long enough for it to matter. Uh, so, what I did was went ahead and did all the TPU. You can see the TPU in the back. Same process. So everything that needed to be melted on, I did it. Um, because we're just going to do this step by step just so you guys can see. So you watch the entire process of putting on the front. All these other pieces were done exactly the same way. So this piece, well I put the uh, back piece on first, this piece here, and then this top piece, and then this side piece. So we've got one more TPU, well two more TPU pieces. This one and this one, both of which are gonna be put on with glue. One goes in the front, and one goes on the top of a piece of uh, PLA. So we're not going to worry about that yet. We're basically just, I'm going to put this piece on and then we're going to let it dry and then we're going to move on to the um, PLA, putting the PLA on. Uh, so this is going to be put on with flex glue. This is actually going to be put on with the fabric. So. Uh, and then, oh, we've got one more piece. I forgot about that. This will be put on with the fabric stuff, too. So just these two little minor pieces will put, be put on with the fabric stuff. And I'll show you guys that. Those are the last two finishing pieces that I'll put on since they're so, so incredibly tiny. Um, we're going to put this piece on, and then we're going to do the PLA here. And then we're going to do the PLA on the side. Now you just let that sit. <clears throat> okay, that should be dry enough to do this. And this is going to be basically, I'm putting it on first. Okay, so I did this off camera only because once I show you how a piece is done, then uh, it's fairly simple after that to just do it. This piece here, I just put it on like I did these pieces. See this one just has the glob in here of flexible sealer glue. Uh, so that flexes and on this one I just put it down in here a glob down in here and a glob down on this side not across the back just those two sides and then I taped it here to pull it down you can really see the glob under there and I'm gonna go at this with a knife to make sure I get all these dangling pieces and stuff off and then I went through you can see here and I filled the whole inside of both of these with uh, 
this glue. Because the way that I look at it is it's supposed to fix boats and stuff. You know? So I'm lining the whole inside because I want this to stay together. I don't want to be walking and then it just break apart uh, because of the pressure. So I put a ton of it on. And then down across here, I couldn't reach my hand down in there. Uh, so I've got this... Um, I think that vinyl repair glue that I showed you guys in the beginning of this video is, I think it's rubber cement. It smells like it, that's for sure. And it's real thin. And so I poured it down in here and basically just sloshed this back and forth until up the side, along the bottom, and up here were completely covered. You can see it. It's real thick. Uh, I did it on both of these. This one I could get my hand in a little farther with this stuff. Uh, but I still, I just want to get as much on as I possibly can on the inside of here. Um, the circle down in the bottom, these didn't come with this print. I actually made these myself. Uh, measured the diameter uh, of this circle because the circles that the shoe came with were terrible and they didn't fit. And I don't know, I don't know what the deal was with them. They're, they're, they should have fit, but they didn't. They, they ended up being too small. And all I did is I took this in the mesh mixer and s did separate, and it separated all the pieces, but for some reason the circles were way too small. So, I made this in Tinkercad, just did a circle uh, with some walls on it so I could uh, drill some holes all in here and put the lights in. Uh, and then I've got one that fits perfectly in here like a cap, and that'll go over the top of that and it'll all fit in here flush. Uh, and what I did is I pushed it in, it was flush. I mean, I did it perfect size. It was flush with the circle. It would have probably stayed in with the pressure from that, uh, but I took some of that, that same glue that I put down here and put it all around there. You can see it, and it's pretty strong. Uh, so I'm just waiting now for all that to dry. And it takes a while for this stuff to dry real hard. Uh, way more than a way more than a couple hours I mean it takes a while for it to dry to work to well to cure the way that you want it to cure uh, then I'll go through and do all this cleanup where glue got got on and we'll, we'll go through and clean all this stuff up um, I also put this piece on with some of that glue the same uh, vinyl glue and actually I've been pulling at this and this glue is really good really good so I'm going to have to be using this all the time. I thought about melting this on because the way that the shoe goes on, it's still tight. And so my heel comes right on the back here. And you can see how this comes back, uh, which that's good. That's good that the heel's like that because it's going to keep these tight on my shoe instead of in, on my foot instead of flopping around. Uh, plus with all the extra inside stuff, it makes it tighter. And then we're going to put a piece of padding right there in the middle. I'll show you that. Now my last printer, the, the Creality Ender 3, ended up coming with all this foam. And it came with uh, these foam pieces that have this tougher foam on top and the thinner foam underneath. Well, the thinner foam is just glued onto the tougher foam. Uh, so I went in here with an X-Acto knife and cut out squares and then a spot on the end for the wires. And this is gonna go over all the wires. So my foot doesn't step on the wires, it'll be stepping on this. And I cut this, you can see the cut line there, at an exact width of uh, those two spots that come out and down. Uh, so this will go right over there. And it'll be more like, a, like an arch, like a real high arch for my foot. Uh, but I've also got some more padding cut out for the front and back. I created this which is going to go across the entire portion of the shoe. And i got to make another one for the right, so this one's just L for the left shoe. So I'll just set this down on another piece of this, and then cut it out, and that'll be for the right shoe. Um, but that'll go in, and then this will go right in the middle. Yeah, over the thing. So I may go in and cut out here, that way this fits down and it's not as much of a high arc. Because this will only squish down so far. And then this will squish down. 
so I'm trying to make it a little bit more comfortable. Alright, I didn't show you guys this uh, on camera because I've already done a bondoing. I think the very first video in all this I kind of I showed you guys how to bondo, how to use bondo, and uh, this bondo putty is basically the same thing. I just put it all on and then sanded it down because like I said, I want this to be super smooth so it kind of takes your eyes off of uh, the 3D printed other pieces uh, in the end. And then I popped in, I made these on Tinkercad because the other ones were terrible. You can see uh, that there, that's the one that I made. Uh, I measured it with a caliper and then made this and then I made these covers to go over them. You can see a slight lip there and they should fit. This is the first time I'm doing it. They should fit right in there. Yep. Right in on top. So. I put uh, the LED lights in. I put the LED lights in with the, and this is all hot glue here. I had to do this this way instead of this way because I could barely reach on the inside so I didn't put any hot glue on the inside. What I'm going to do is use more of this fabric stuff here and I'm going to put it all on the inside here just for double strength and I'm going to basically fill this up because this is clear. That way these set down in it and that's good. I don't, I don't think that's, you know, that's not going to be typical flush. But through time of walking on it, uh, that's going to that's gonna flatten out a lot more, I think. I couldn't, I had to set the lights back in more, like you can see. Oh, I can't get it to not blur. You can see how far up the LEDs are. Um, so that kind of sucks. Uh, I wanted them to sit, be more in there, so I should have probably made that deeper. Uh, so I kind of had to hold the LEDs there as I put them in, and then I would tag some super glue or some of this hot glue on, and put the next one. Then I just kind of filled the hole. So. so that's perfectly fine. So what I'm going to do now. This is clear. I'm just going to fill that up. And take a brush. Brush it all over the sides. All over everything. So what I did was, this is the second one, build it up. The reason why I'm using this stuff is because it's flexible adhesive, and you can see that there's a little bit of gap between this here and the outer circle. And the reason for that is I made the outer circle 40 millimeters and the inner circle uh, 39, and then you put the flexible adhesive in there. So when you walk, this is able to shift and it doesn't just pop out because this is hard PLA and the outer, outer circle is hard PLA. So if this was to hit the ground and you know, move, then this could just pop right out if they were, if it was hard um, glue, glue that hardens into like a rock or something, you know, rock hard. Instead, it's going to be able to move. The more moving parts, the better. Like this is hard PLA, but this, but they're melted together, and it's got the flexible adhesive inside it. So even though this isn't able to move, these are able to move on either side of it. You know, same thing with this. This is going to be able to move back and forth. Um, just some. An extra precaution that I'm taking so it doesn't just pop out the first time I wear it or something and I lose it. Here's. I'm going to show you guys the wiring. 
Well, I'm going to probably just show you guys the wiring stripped out and then how it's set in here. And the reason I'm not going to show you how it's being wired, like I'm going to wire it all up and put the connector on it and then kind of put it aside and I'll show you guys all that. And then putting the piece of foam over the top of it all and smashing it all down to where, you know, my foot can go uncomfortably. I'll show you guys all that, but I'm like probably not going to show you the, the actual wiring itself. But if you guys want to see the wiring, it's going to be wired exactly the same as the hands are wired. In fact, from this angle, you guys can tell it's practically the same thing. Here's the hand. wiring all the way up and then you can see that in there it's gonna be basically be the same thing those are gonna move, be moved to us to probably downwards and they're gonna go back to one of the corners and then they're gonna go up the leg all right check it out they are ready for the first layer of primer filler. So all those beautiful colors say bye bye. Basically you've seen all this before. On the TPU I'm gonna go fairly light. And this is actually gonna show me for the first time because with all those colors you can't really tell what parts are real messed up and what parts aren't. Because that red uh, TPU was printed on the Anycubic uh, 3 Mega, which does not print TPU very good. And I had to go in and use a uh, soldering iron to straighten it all out. So that's not too bad. Yeah, that's pretty good. I mean, it was bad. I wish I'd have taken pictures of it when it was really bad. So what I've done here is I've cleaned this up a little bit and underneath this is uh, all the laid down and that there is all the laid down wiring, laid it down just like I did to the backs of the hands and put super glue all over the top of it. Ran the wires to the side here. I needed as much wire as I could so I could get up the side just like that. Um, same thing. Put, uh, I put shrink wrap around it. Ran it to the back there. Uh, and soldered these together to a male end here. And uh, same thing with this other side here. It's a little bit nicer. And ran up to a male end. And that's plenty of wiring, so I can tuck the wiring probably into the shoe. And then uh, I'm gonna be putting, I've got the glue gun on right now, and I'll be putting glue gun all along the wiring here to keep it steady so it's not shifting around and underneath my feet. So I've turned this suit on, you can see the lights on that, and this is how I can test it without needing the battery. I'm just going to unplug that, and this side is a female that hooks directly into the battery. So, I'm going to take this first shoe, and connect that in, see it lit up underneath. And you can see it on that side. So that looks really good. 
All right, let's do the next one. Let's turn this shit around. Yeah, that looks really good too. So they both look really, really good. I'm listening to the most hilarious scam video I've ever heard in my life. You guys need to check check this out. It's called the angriest scammer I've ever called. No, I just want to purchase the ticket online before Anyways. So this is what they look like all jazzed up in one uniform color. Went through with the clippers on there was a spot in TPU here. Some spots along the bottom, along the side, and kind of even that up a little bit more. I'm not even sanding this um, because of the TPU for the most part. Uh, but it looks pretty smooth on the PLA. I didn't get really any dripping or anything like that, so that's good. I'm just going to go ahead and start putting the red on. And then I'll probably sand this down on the, depending on how it turns out looking and stuff. Uh, but I don't think I need. Sometimes you just don't need to sand down the, the primer filler. You just don't. And it's really good to take like a 600 grit sandpaper to this after you're done and before you put the uh, gloss coat on it. Uh, I've learned that in the last few. <laughs> probably uh, the bottom half that I've been printing, uh, I've been doing that to all of them and they look so much better. Um, so, here we go, let's do this. By the way, you can see my wire there, and you can see the tape on the end of it, because the connector pieces are taped up on both of these, and they both say right and left in, the, in here since I did paint the bottom. I did end up painting the front part of the bottom. I taped up the black part, but I did paint the front part. The right and left that was painted on the, that was marked on the bottom of both of these, it's gone. But I still want that reference just in case. It'll be easier, because this whole suit takes two people to put it on. I'm marking all of my pieces. It'll help my son because he puts the suit on me. And the last time we put it on, you guys seen that, we did have a few spots like the, we first put the ankles on, where we had to take them back off and put them on the right legs. Because if they're on the wrong ones, I mean, they they hurt if you put them on the wrong, the wrong ankles. the rest of that when we paint the bottom. Let that dry for now. That looks good though. It really does. 